Welcome everyone to Defender for Cloud in the field. Today we are going to have a follow-up discussion uh, about Defender for Containers, uh, but more focus on our latest GCP connector and in particular to the GKE uh, support that we introduced with this new connector. And um, we, we had Maya in the show some weeks ago, she talked about the cloud world workload protection capability for the new GCP Connect and today we have our friend Nadav uh, joining us to expand this conversation. So Nadav, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you for having me. All right, Nadav. So let's just start uh, this conversation talking about uh, this architecture of the, this new connector and in particular the um, G GKE cluster and, and our support on that. Can you uh, expand a little bit on this topic and show a little bit of the architecture? Definitely. Uh, before we are going deep dive into the architecture and talking about, you know, uh, seeing some uh, demo and integration inside the Azure portal, I want to say that it's a very unique uh, a moment to a product like uh, Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Um, I, I am in the product, you know, for, for almost seven years. And I, I see a lot of changes in the product along the way, but becoming a multi-cloud product, a product that's supporting not just Azure, but other clouds uh, together with on-premises is a unique moment and opportunity uh, to Microsoft and uh, all the people that are working on the project. So uh, I'm really excited about it. I can share that inside, you know, inside MDC, uh, uh, all the people are, are, are very excited about this opportunity and the moment and the integration that we are doing uh, with other clouds. Um, so it's a uh, unique and special uh, uh, for us. Absolutely, it's a, it's a great moment, uh, and the customers are super excited as well. I've been uh, talking to customers about this capability since it was in private preview, and the level of excitement is really high. So great work there for sure. Thank you. And uh, yeah, sure, let's go to the architecture. So uh, as you mentioned, um, I'm focusing on uh, leading the uh, uh, one of the teams that's working on container security inside MDC. Uh, we built a lot of features around containers, and, and these days we are working, uh, uh, of course, on the, on the multi-cloud integration in both AWS and GCP. Um, as you mentioned, our latest release is the GKE integration. Uh, so all the demo and all the slides today will be around uh, uh, the integration with GCP uh, and the GKE clusters. Um, so. Let me share my screen. You will see the. Uh, I will go quickly about the architecture and what what we are going to see today. All right. Uh, so what you can see in this diagram is that um, uh, we first of all starting by monitoring your GKE clusters, which means that uh, we first creating a connectivity which we which we call GCP connector, and this connectivity, this plugin, allowing us. Uh, to access your uh, GCP project and GCP environment. And once we're there, uh, uh, we are monitoring both your control plane environment, the, the, the part that is managing by uh, GKE, and also your worker nodes and, and your workload that deployed uh, uh, inside, uh, uh, inside your cluster. Um, how we are actually doing it? So on the manage part, we are collecting a, a, a special a log da a data type um, uh, or a log type uh, that mo that called audit log, which is monitoring all the admin and actually all the users' activities, service accounts activities against the management level uh, and the API um, and the API server in Kubernetes. Um, we are actually monitoring all these operations and we are taking them and collect them from your GCP environment uh, directly to uh, Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Once it gathers, we are running uh, our advanced threat protection engines on top of this data and we will you know, let you know once we see some suspicious, some activities that we are not expecting to be there. Um, uh, uh, so all this way, uh, all this way around from GCP to Microsoft Defender, and all the monitoring um, uh, um, actually happening cloud to cloud. Um, so you will get visibility and uh, uh, threat protection, security alerts once we will fund some. Uh, 
In addition, uh, we are also deploying um, uh, our security agent into your environment, into each one of your worker nodes. We are deploying it with a daemon set, uh, which is one of the controllers in Kubernetes. Um, and, and once our security agent is there, we are able to monitor your environment. We are able to see all, for example, all the processes that are running inside your environment and from which containers uh, uh, these processes are, are running from. And everything will be monitored and will be collected to the backend services of our uh, Microsoft Defender for Cloud. And from there again, we will uh, give you visibility and we will give you uh, um, uh, security alerts and, and we will give you these security alerts on time once we are detecting it. Um, in addition, uh, we integrated the policy add-on uh, into our offering. Uh, it's also a very interesting integration between Microsoft Defender and Azure Policy. Um, and of course, the folks of Arc for Kubernetes that are uh, allowing us and helping us to connecting different uh, a different Kubernetes environment into Microsoft Defender. So it's an actual integration of three different groups uh, which allows to get a, a great um, a policy visibility uh, and enforcement together with the open source gatekeeper um, uh, tools, um, which, allow you, which allow us again to, to bring also the policy, um, uh, the policy arena um, uh, into our multi-cloud offering. Um, you any question about this diagram before I'm going to the demo? Uh, no, actually, uh, this diagram is very comprehensive. Uh, one, I think the only follow-up question is: is the onboarding process? Uh, do we uh, do we do all the uh, deployment uh, of the prerequisites for the extension in the Arc, or is it like a manual deployment? Yeah, so it's a great question. Uh, we work really, really hard to do it automatically and that will cover everything in our demo. All right, great. So uh, let's, uh, before, let's just one more question before we go to the demo, because uh, I want to clarify that. As far as permission, what are the, the required permissions on the GCP side to do this type of uh, deployment? Yeah, definitely. It's a great question. And uh, um, yeah, I'm not surprised that you're asking it because it arrived from all our customers. Uh, when we design the solution for multi-cloud, um, uh, I think the first ask that we got from all customers is, we are okay with give you permissions, but please just ask the permissions that we are that you are really need for. Mm -hmm. um, don't ask admin permission for the entire uh, project or account in the case of AWS. Be specific. So. We worked hard actually to map the required permissions. It's not was an, uh, an easy task, but uh, uh, we was able to, to map it. In, in some cases, we are even creating a dedicated roles uh, for scenarios that uh, 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 for us that was not exist by, by default. And um, so for any integration, the customer can fully control on the permissions. It can, we call it bring your own role or bring your own service account. Um, uh, it's built in inside as part of the platform and I will show it as part of the demo. Uh, but this is an important point because we work hard to make sure that we as MDC will have access only and only to the resources that we need to. All right, well, so let's see how this magic works. So let's go through the demo and, and, and take a look on that. So the first thing that you can see in MDC that um, um, uh, if you will go um, uh, to environment settings. It's a new area uh, inside the product. Um, you now have the ability to add environment. And what actually add environment means is that, and is that you can connect your um, uh, AWS account or your GCP project into MDC. Uh, so as we are focusing on, on GCP, I will go with that. Um, and once you are, you, you actually arriving to the screen that telling you, let's create a connector. This connector is between MDC and, uh, and the GCP project. So I will open uh, a GCP project. Let me choose one. Um, let me go with this one. OK. So if you are if you're filtering on your GCP project um, um, and uh, you're looking on the screen, inside the GCP connector. So you can see that uh, you need to choose a name. I will take the project name. 
and uh, you should ask uh, you, uh, you should fill in the uh, the subscription and resource group um, uh, that you want to uh, relate to this uh, con to this account to this project um, uh, uh, so because everything in, in in Microsoft Defender is around subscription uh, we are asking you to do the connection and uh, we will use this subscription to build um, uh, uh, to build uh, your your account uh, and your credit card about uh, resources and the protection that we are providing. In, in addition, the resource group uh, that we are creating is actually allow you to control and see which resources we provisioned on the um, uh, uh, on the um, uh, AWS, on the Azure side. Um, so let me just create it. So you can um, uh, you can control and manage uh, which resources created on on the on the Azure side, and uh, the connector itself is also a resource that will be part of this resource group. Um, you can choose a, a location again, the location of the connector, and then you need to insert the GCP project number and GCP project ID. Again, both you can take from the GCP console. And let's go next. So in this screen, uh, you can choose which offering or which plans you want uh, to go with. So you can see here below that we have the containers plan. And uh, uh, containers plan uh, is on by default and is fully configured uh, um, uh, in the best way that we think you should go with to protect your GCP environment in terms of uh, uh, Kubernetes clusters. Let's go deep dive into the configuration. So. Um, uh, uh, the first question that we are asking you if you are allowing us to interact with the audit logs, if you remember in the diagram, this is what actually monitor your, um, uh, uh, your control plane area and actually monitoring all the activities against the API server. So it's very, very important uh, uh, to turn it on if you want us to um, uh, monitor and automatically monitor um, uh, uh, your, your environment in terms of um, uh, uh, all the access to, to the API server. In addition, there are two more flags. The first one talking about, um, as I mentioned, there are two extensions as, and uh, as I saw in, as I present in the diagram, one going to the, um, our security agent, a defender extension uh, for Azure Arc, and the second one is the integration that we made with, uh, with Azure Policy. So you can decide if you want us to, pro to auto provision um, uh, uh, those two as well. This will provide um, a security and policy and visibility to the uh, worker nodes and to the containerized workload on your cluster. The auto provision, um, of, uh, the, auto -provision the, the last option right there, uh, is a requirement for Gatekeeper to work? So this will automatically bring Gatekeeper into your cluster, and yes, uh, um, uh, it depends on Gatekeeper, but you don't need to do something uh, manually by, by yourself. We will bring it in as well. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so everything is configurable. You can control on your environment and what you we uh, you actually want us to, to deploy to your environment. So uh, I will go next. Uh, so, uh, uh, so both of you that are actually familiar with CloudShell uh, will be familiar with this uh, generated template. It's actually a CloudShell uh, template that you can execute on your um, uh, console, uh, on the console project on the GCP side. I will do it in a minute. And it's allowing us to get, to generate all the permissions, all the service accounts, and um, uh, all the configuration that we need to enable on the project on the onboarding phase. Um, and as I mentioned, you can edit service account um, uh, and play with uh, with permissions and, uh, as you wish uh, uh, for any integration that we have for uh, posture management, for containers, for uh, uh, data collection, and also for servers. You have different service accounts. Each service account allowing us the granularity um, of controlling the permissions and the integration that you want us. Um, uh, uh, you actually want to give. Uh, a Microsoft Defender, uh, and you can decide on the service account. And if you like, you can go to GCP, and I will show it as part of the demo. You can play with the permissions of this service account later on. Uh, I will continue with the with the with the default. Uh, so, just before that, I will copy uh, the script, and I will go to uh, CloudShell on the GCP side. Okay. 
Okay, great. So um, again, I will copy this um, uh, uh, this uh, cloud shell uh, script. I will paste it here. So this script, um, uh, using my permissions uh, uh, to configure everything required for MDC to uh, get access to the uh, uh, to, to Google Cloud, uh, uh, enabling uh, uh, default permissions, uh, enabling uh, um, uh, specific settings that we are required to uh, uh, to manipulate to work on your environment, and uh, everything is is generated according. Uh, to the settings um, uh, that you configured, that you configured, and you choose on the on the previous uh, on the previous and, screen. And, so I will give it one more. What is the privilege that I have to have in GCP to run this script? So you need to be admin on the project. Okay, just to run this script. Yeah, because you are actually it, it's a it's a it's a one time moment, and you need uh, you know to actually connect a security product to the uh, GCP um, uh, cloud project, yes, you need to have a, a higher level privileges uh, to actually allow this integration. Okay. So let's give it a moment. Okay, the script is completed and um, uh, uh, you can see that we got a, a unique ID for the integration with servers. It's not part of this demo, but uh, anyway, I, I will put it in. Uh, so you can see here that I have the uh, input box where I can see the number that I got from the integration and I will generate and I will create um, and I will create the connectors. Um, it will um, uh, create the, the resource, the connector resource uh, uh, behind the scenes for me. Um, okay, let's give it a moment. Okay, so I give it some time to run in the background until it will complete the, the, the provisioning. Um, uh, so now that the, you will see the new uh, connectors for GCP, uh, um, uh, you will see them available um, uh, inside your environment. Is, is, here is our uh, new one, um, and now our backend services will start to discover resources on your environment. It can be uh, GKE clusters, it can be servers, and it depends on the plans that you decided to enable. Um, it can take some time, uh, so in the meantime... Well, talking about um, time, uh, what is really the, the refresh time? Because as you are creating, it's going to uh, uh, refresh and uh, discover everything. Okay, from that point on, is the refresh every six hours, five hours? Yeah, so today the refresh rate is four hours. We are going. We are connecting to your environment and discovering new resources every uh, four hours. So it can take some time. Uh, and once we discover the, the new resources, all the installation will be will be applied in in a matter of minutes. Okay. Uh, so as I mentioned, it can take uh, up to four hours. So um, uh, before that, uh, I prepare uh, an account. Uh, so let's let's go into it. So you can see here that I created a, the GCP uh, containers um, uh, auto provisioning. We call it uh, account a project. So let's see uh, what we are actually getting from it. So the first place to go is so let me first share this in the Google portal so we can see. I will go to the containers AP. Uh, so let's take a look on GKE. So in GKE, you can see that I have two clusters, GKE um, uh, demo one and demo two. So if I will go to the inventory blade inside Microsoft Defender, and I will search for this one. Oh, yep, I will filter on um, resource type. GCP container cluster. So you can see that we discovered uh, this cluster. You will see a nice icon that telling you that this is a GKE mm -hmm. cluster. And once you will go in, you can see the project number that is related to, you can see the connector, you can see the environment, etc. And you can see uh, security recommendations that related nice. to it. And if you will, 
if you will see, you will see that these security recommendations are already mm -hmm. healthy. And the question is why? And um, uh, if you remember, we enabled um, auto-provisioning at the beginning, which means that, uh, let's, take, and let's take a look for a second on the recommendation. If you will go in, it tells you that GKE clusters should have Microsoft Defender extension for Arc installed. And because we are and we enabled auto provision in DC, um, uh, make an, all the magic for you uh, in the backend. So it's related for both for the uh, Microsoft Defender extension and also for the Azure policy extension. So it's a pretty awesome because yeah, it is great. Discovered your cluster. We also connected to it and we installed our security engine and our policy agent into it without any action from your side. Um, mm -hmm. No, so that's amazing. Totally, that's and this is something that we truly work hard um, uh, to arrive to it. Let's co let's con let's connect it to the cluster just to complete uh, the picture. Mm -hmm. So, give me one second. Uh, I will take one cluster and I will connect to it. Yep, so let's go with demo one. Okay, so um, let me filter for, so uh, l let's take a look on the namespaces. Uh, so what you can see here is the is the pods view. This is all the workload that's running on your clusters. And I will take on the different namespaces that are automatically created and provisioned for you. So you can see Azure Arc, uh, because we are using Azure Arc as the vehicle to providing our security capabilities. You can see Azure Defender. This is our namespace. I will go within to it with a minute. You can see Gatekeeper here. And uh, on the on the default namespace on on Coops, sorry on the Coop system, you can see the Azure policy capabilities uh, right there. So everything installed, everything is ready out of the box for you. Uh, if you will go to Azure Arc, you can see all the components that related to Azure Arc and actually helping us to manage your clusters. Um, and if you will go to Azure Defender, you can see our components there. You can see the different content containers are running, and you can see our daemon set. Uh, uh, deployed on your environment. So this is a look to deep dive um, uh, into your into your cluster. Um, another interesting point. Um, uh, let's take let's go back to to Azure. Uh, so we now saw some recommendations that we gave you, and we saw that this recommendations was was uh, completed automatically uh, out of the box for you. And let's take a look a little bit about what is the security value that you can get from it. So I will go to Microsoft Defender again. I will go to, um, let's start with security alerts. So here as well, um, I will filter on the resource type of GCP. And you can see that, um, uh, you can see that we have uh, security alerts that was generated on your cluster. I will open it a little bit for you. Um, so this is a, a, a mock alert that we are uh, that we are working on. We, we go with full details, and you can see here the connected uh, cloud project that this um, uh, this uh, uh, resource is related to. I want to show you some uh, other alert with a little bit more information. Yeah, but that's uh, that's good because we are just like we do for uh, Azure resources. Uh, we are uh, going through the uh, secure posture management aspect and uh, providing recommendations as well as from the threat detection capabilities to show alerts. So we are covering both both parts and uh, providing similar experience if you're. Uh, Kubernetes in Azure or in GCP, and of course in uh, AWS as well. Yeah, it's yeah totally true. Uh, the 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 folks that will you know watch the video and are and, and are familiar with with the offering uh, containers offering that we have for Azure um, will be very familiar uh, with what we're presenting uh, right now. So uh, as you mentioned, uh, it, it's a, it's an amazing integration because because it's um, it's actually seamless to which cloud are, to which cloud are you using at. Um, behind the scene at MDC, you will get the same experience. Um, and here you can see a, an alert that is uh, based 
um, uh, on, uh, on the uh, on the Azure Arc, how you can see that the uh, Azure Arc based, you can see the icon, uh, you remember the demo one mm -hmm. um, uh, cluster that we had, so uh, you can see here all the information again um, uh, uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the resource, on the GKE resource, and uh, you can see a lot of information that we had had uh, as part of our new containers offering at MDC, and uh, things that are related to containers, yep, yep. like uh, uh, container ID, container image, uh, you can see the Kubernetes cluster and you can see also the, the actually the process that we uh, found as malicious. This, uh, this uh, we got this ask um, uh, uh, from our customers to give them the full visibility, not only about the security alerts and about the resource, but going to the next level and discuss about the container, the image that this container is about, in addition to information that are coming from the node. Uh, so we worked really hard to, to build this view and then uh, actually allowing you to see the context, uh, to see the container context on the security alert that you are receiving. Nadav, great demo. Uh, I think that this helps to, to connect the dots uh, based on the, uh, Maya's episode and then this follow-up going a little bit deeper. Uh, just as a final consideration, do you have any uh, thoughts on the integration roadmap for Azure Arc and multi-cloud that you can talk about? Uh, it's a good question. So uh, uh, as, as I mentioned, and as you can see, we are fully um, uh, based on Azure Arc. Uh, Azure Arc is a, is a Microsoft concept, is talking not, about, not only about um, uh, uh, containers and Kubernetes uh, resources, but all of them, SQL server, SQL servers and servers and and more and more are coming. Um, so we are working um, hand and and hand in hand, and uh, you know shoulder to shoulder with the Arc team to create a one experience uh, in terms of uh, a multi cloud. Um, it's going to be a long journey, and we are um, uh, going to continue and investing in in these areas. Um, so it's it's a long partnership. Yeah. Uh, we, are, we are continue building uh, our security offering on top of Azure. Yeah, and I love the fact that uh, the auto provisioning takes care of everything, at least for containers. Uh, this is amazing. Uh, the fact that we will deploy the Arc and then we will deploy the the necessary agents. So great work on the auto provisioning. This is gonna help a lot of customers that to not be worried about which one they need to deploy first and things like that. So excellent job there. Thank you very much, Yuri. All right, Nadav, thank you, thank you for taking the time to record this today. Uh, I, I truly appreciate uh, Congratulations for you and for your team for this uh, great effort. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and come to try it out. Yes. Uh, in talking about tryout, uh, make sure to also use our user voice. If you want to provide feedback, uh, you can share your thoughts on the user voice. If there is anything that is missing or if you want to uh, uh, share ideas, uh, the link, I'm going to put the link below here so you can access the user voice and share your ideas. And with that, uh, that's a wrap for today's episode. Make sure to subscribe to Microsoft Security Channel. Again, the link below. Um, and um, stay tuned because we have a lot more great episodes to come. Um, it's going to be a great year. We're full of new capabilities coming up so in a, a busy year for everyone. So thank you for uh, your participation on the creation of this great product. And Adav, again, thank you very much for your time. All right, everyone. See you again next time.